Thank you very much. Uh, we shall now move to uh, MP Duncan, please. Thank you. Thanks again, Minister, and to your officials, and look forward to talking with them in the next hour. Um, in follow-up to my colleague's uh, question, um, I'm a little stunned at the response, Madam Minister. Uh, one of the named sources who have castigated Canada for failing to deliver its fair share of aid is the OECD. And the OECD in the Development Cooperation Review 2018 severely criticizes Canada for the drop in percentage GNI of aid. I'm wondering, uh, Madam Minister, if you have provided a response to their concerns, and if so, you could provide that to the committee. Uh, thank you, Linda, and many thanks for your advocacy on this front. Uh, the OECD is a partner that we welcome uh, collaboration with on a range of things. Uh, have we provided them with a response? I'm not sure. Let me follow up. Uh, but I will say increased spending, uh, Canada's ODA has gone up by 8%. Uh, that adds up uh, where we were in 2016 was 5.64 billion dollars uh, we are at six billion dollars now this is uh, also due to the fact that we're investing differently we've established FinDev other countries had similar instruments to leverage financing Canada didn't we have that now, and it's got $300 million invested in it. Uh, the ODA ratio, uh, the ODA to GNI ratio has increased by 0.28%. It's gone up from what it was the year before. And I will also say that we are also investing differently and providing leadership that others I have some are questions following. about that, so I, if Happy I to. could ask you questions on that. But I do look forward, if you've done a response to the OECD, I would appreciate that. It's an issue of concern raised by every development organization in Canada. Um, a concern that has been expressed to me, Madam Minister, is the Department to their credit did consult with Canadian civil society on how they plan to deliver the action items under the Feminist International Assistance Policy. But there's been no response. And so they're wondering, when can we expect the guidance uh, there was another uh, independent review by the Canadian International Development Platform. They also had the same criticism. When can we expect that there will be some level of guidance? Where the concern really exists is less so in the organizations that are interested in delivering increased assistance to women, the ones who historically have delivered assistance to things like sanitation, agriculture, and water, and so forth. So when can Canadian civil society expect finally receiving that guidance? Thank you for that question, and I know that our team's been hard at work. Uh, we unveiled part of it in Washington uh, in April, the Feminist International Humanitarian piece. So that's been unveiled. The rest is coming shortly, and I do want to uh, pay particular attention to the time and the hard work of our stakeholders who helped shape the policy as a whole. We couldn't have done it without them. Okay, thanks. We look forward to getting that guidance. Um, we're currently reviewing uh, how Canada could support democratic governance and we're hoping that before uh, Parliament closes that we might have some kind of recommendations to you. Um, I noted in your Feminist International Assistance Policy, one of your action items actually is on that. There's been some disagreement about whether or not they relate to the SDGs. I noticed your report actually specifically, your policy specifically addresses SDG 16. Um, can you advise me if it's your understanding that SDG 16 also includes support for democratic governance and if so do you intend to move forward and to provide more assistance in that area? Um, ha having lived in a non-democratic nation and then being here uh, I appreciate that democracy is a gift uh, and here in Canada we benefit from a healthy democracy and we are working, for example, with the interventions we've recently made in Ukraine to help ensure that greater stability is drive because of a stronger set of institutions that protect democracy. And yes, you're absolutely right. The Feminist International Assistance Policy does commit Canada to supporting democracy to international uh, development initiatives that, for example, help 
to increase the political participation of women, including young and marginalized women. We're also working with governments to ensure that their level of engagement with women and girls includes meaningful participation in decision-making pro processes. And we're also investing in advocacy and programming to address discriminatory laws that prevent women and marginalized individuals from realizing their full economic, social, uh, and political rights. Do I have a few more seconds? You have uh, right on the 30-second warning, so yes, you have 30 <laughs> okay, seconds thanks. more. Um, Madam Minister, I want to follow up on what my, my colleague had asked about the SRHR. There is concern expressed that uh, uh, we don't know yet if the government's committed to going beyond the three-year pilot. Is there an intention going forward to give long-term commitment to the SRHR? We are always going to stand up for women's sexual rights, health and reproductive rights at home and around the world. We did make a commitment in 2016 for $650 million over three years to do this work. Uh, and we are actively working with partners, including those who help shape our feminist international assistance policy to come up with a smarter, more sustainable and long-term approach to this work. More to come. Thank you very much.